Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hoyt, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, the Hunter. Welcome back to the Baseball Hoyt. Hopefully you like this video and don't get too annoyed with the echo. Still sort of moving in here. Got to get some new paint on the walls, got to get some, some pictures on the walls and get the big TV set up. But um, we're back here talking about our Mets. And I got swept today by the Guardians. Um... Jose Quintana pitched well enough to lose. He pitched five innings, gave up three runs, which is what he normally does. Uh, now, I would mention this, and more just to mention, Reed Garrett, the bloom was coming off the rose there. He lost his first game. Uh, Mets better be very careful. I know he's pitched really well. He's been quite the story. But we do not forget about a, per, a player's history and his sort of what he's done in the past. Um, prior to the season, he had an ERA over seven. Um, and now you start to see some, you know, walking some batters. Uh, he got the loss today. Also, Adam Adovino is not pitched nearly as well, not you know, pitched nearly as effectively as he had. So now we're starting to see some sort of buckling a little bit of the bullpen. The bullpen's been really good, other than Edwin Diaz. But when that guy at the top is not doing well, puts a lot of pressure on everybody else in that bullpen. We saw that last year with uh, Edwin being out for a year. All right, now this is a rant, <clears throat> okay? And uh, just an overall, just getting an overall kind of where my mindset is as a Mets fan, and really it's just as a Mets fan, and as a YouTuber, you know, uh, as a Mets fan. It is very frustrating when you sit and watch the games and you watch them for years, and this sort of, you have this team sort of uh, spinning his wheels all the time. And, he, and as you hear the birds, the birds have returned, folks. I got them in another one, but they're still chirping. And that's saying hello to everybody. Hit the subscribe button if you like that, if you like that uh, chirping. And send me a super thanks if you love that chirper. And if you missed that chirp. But uh, the Mets are a bad team. Uh, this group is a bad team. Uh, this team has been together for essentially five years with Alonzo, McNeil, Nimmo, Lindor came in, and Edwin Diaz. It is time to, uh, we're getting awfully close to it, if not right at the moment, we decide that it's time to blow it up. I don't, I don't believe uh, that we're watching a team that has the ability uh, to make that final wild card. Okay. Uh, I, I've seen enough uh, last year, I was much earlier than everybody else. I really went after the club. I'm going to really go after the club now. The club's not going to know what hit. I don't know what I'm going to say now in these videos. Uh, I'm going to go after Lindor in a separate video. McNeil's probably going to get ripped apart. I'm, I'm, there's not one stone that's going to get unturned. That's going to get unturned. Every stone's going to get turned here. I'm going to rip apart the entire team now. Uh, and it's very frustrating. Like I said, you spend a lot of hours watching the games. Uh, that's really what it is. It's about... Wasting time. Life's too short to be wasting time. And uh, we've seen with this particular organization, and this is just on just an overall thing, uh, they waste too much time, they waste too many years trying to figure it out. When things don't go that way, it takes them a long time to figure out uh, where to go from here and when, when things don't go well. Now, over the next couple of, of weeks, there's going to be plenty of videos of me just ripping apart this club, ripping apart the direction of the team. Now, I know Dave Stearns has done a good job uh, with the Brewers. They did a great job, and they're still a good organization there in Milwaukee. Uh, anyone complaining that they don't want a guy that did a good job somewhere else has to have the head examined. I know WFN is getting their razors ready. They're, they're sharpening their claws now. I know they are. Because they're added to, oh, we were right. It's so full of shit. They don't know, what, they don't know anything. Okay. You give people a chance to do what they need to do. If they don't do it, then you, then you discuss it, and you talk about it, and then you move forward. But we're now at the point, and I am at this point, folks. It is time uh, to start looking at this team long and hard. Start, and people say, we got you, this one, you that. Okay, we're fine. You got to figure out where the value is. got to figure out what you're willing to do to get rid of some of these players. Uh, the Francisco Lindor trade, it was a good trade. But the, the four years that he's been here has been a has not been 
of what it was in Cleveland. He seemed much happier when he was playing in Cleveland for those three days than it seemed like over the last four years with the Mets. It was almost like a reprieve for him. Uh, he seemed like he was much more relaxed. I do think I do think it's very disrespectful that he took a bow on a play that was a bang bang play. It wasn't like a play that you know it's an obvious play, uh, obviously in that first game. And I thought that he he's just a clown. I mean, really, uh, between his hair and the woke, I mean, I can, I'm gonna really rip into him his wokeness and everything else. Uh, it is long due to really start really driving it home. Get him out of here, um, and that that's what I'm gonna do. Talk about talk about him in these videos on this platform on YouTube. Just rip him apart. I was not in favor of the trade at the time. I was very uptight that they traded on Andres Jimenez. I didn't care if they moved Rosario. Rosario has a Swiss cheese head. His his ability to figure out how to be a good uh, fundamental player wasn't there. But Jimenez, you saw it on the field in 2020 how good he was, and I was very disappointed the Mets moved him in that deal. Um, and you saw it, he killed him on, on Wednesday when he hit the three-run home run against Quintana, against the lefty. This is a kid that is going to be a good player for a long time. I thought that when I saw him back in 2020 in a rather abbreviated time, and he did a good job. You know, And the Mets moved him. I was like, why are you moving him so quickly? He's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of ability. But they moved him out of here. Uh, I was not happy about the Lindor trade because I felt that this was a mistake again from a Cleveland player, and we've seen two other players that came from Cleveland, a middle infielder that was a disaster, Carlos Bayarga, and of course, uh, Robbie Alomar. And now we have a third guy from, and he's been here longer than those guys have, and the Mets were, were, were very quick to sign into a long-term deal when everybody knew that all these big shortstops were going to be free agents at the 21 season. Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon. Um, Javi Baez, although Baez has been a disaster since he signed that deal with the Tigers, but you catch my breath, you catch my drift, and of course Correa a couple years ago after that. So there was a reason for the Mets to hold back a little bit, see the market, see who was going to be good. But they were so quick to bring him in here, and so quick to sign him when there was no reason to sign him. You make a trade. I'll give the Yankees credit, even as all this monkey crap talk about them signing Juan Soto. Juan Soto's playing for the Yankees. He's, he, He's acclimated it well. He's got a great personality. His personality is, is a big personality. He can handle being in New York. Lindor, I think we, we can tell now. I can tell. I mean, we knew the first year that New York is not for him. And if New York's not for him, get him out of here. Okay. It's the, the experiment. It wasn't really an experiment. I never looked at him as a savior. Anyone, people have been writing to me, oh, he was a savior. Nobody ever thought that he was a savior. He was the first big move of Steve Cohen, Steve Cohen ownership. Okay. Mistake wasn't making the trade. The mistake was signing him to that 10-year deal. You're going to sign to that 10-year deal. You better make damn sure that he's the right player for your team because New York is a pain in the ass to play in, and playing for the Mets is a very stressful situation, much more stressful than the Yankees. Now, the Yankees don't have George Steinbrenner on their team. They got Al. Al! One of the three Stooges. You know. So, Lindor, I'm going to rip him in, in, on the baseball hut, too, at some point. Um... I only mentioned him because he's an example. He's the center of this. Because I will say this, and I, and I have not mentioned this. There, I, we've seen now a little bit from him a real lack of seriousness. In Cleveland, he's sort of oh, happy, go lucky, blah, blah, blah. But it's more like a real seriousness about winning. I thought he was getting it in 2022, but he's reverted back to that. That whole nonsense of him bowing because the call was close. At, at first base, it was a bang-bang play, and he's taking a bow, you know, having fun with his ex-teammates. I would mention that the, at the Guardians, when they were the Indians, thought that Lindor was so good, why didn't they re-sign him to a, a big contract? They had the money. They could have done it. Look what they did with Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez, uh, they signed him to a big contract, and he's still, he's still productive four seasons later. This is not a situation with Lindor. Uh... That he's been here a year. He's been here four years, folks. He's been here that long. People sort of forget about that. Uh, the pitching staff. This pitching staff has a big problem and it has a bad pitching coach. Jeremy Hefton should have been fired after last season. How many managers has he survived? 
again, about this core, I'm all over the place right now. About this core, this core has gone through four managers. You can only blame the new ownership so much until you start to realize that maybe the, 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 the manager isn't the problem. Maybe the player is the problem. Now, we know that Mickey Calloway was a problem because he was always texting women. And then maybe that's why he couldn't figure out the lineup. Maybe he was so busy texting these different women on, you know, on his phone, he forgot that he had the, forgot the place of the players. And when he gave him the lineup card, that's, well, that's not the right lineup that you're putting up there for us. Stop texting the women, Mickey, <laughs> before, before we go out on the field. Well, anyway, but they, you know, he was here. He got, he got fired. Then they brought in Louis Rojas, who seemed, didn't know what the hell was going on. In my view, they got rid of him. Then they brought in Buck Showalter, who did a great job the first year, but then everything sort of disintegrated at the end of 22. And then 23 was a disaster. So then they brought in Carlos Mendoza, who seems to know what he's doing, but maybe the problem isn't the manager. Maybe the problem now is the players. And if that's the case, blow it up. Blow, you know, wash your hands of it. Get rid of everybody. Oh, the only problem with that is what do you do for next year? And that is, that is something we'll, we'll discuss uh, as we go along. But it's only May 22nd. Um, they still have some time. They have a couple more weeks. But this is like a sort of a, a, a precursor to a big rant. This rant has... I didn't watch the game. I was working. And I heard that I was driving home. Back to the new baseball hut. Back to the new baseball hut. I heard the end of the game. Um... So that's my sort of interaction, my sort of feel for the game, which wasn't really much. Uh, but this is what we have to deal with as fans. We spend a lot of time, a lot of energy, we want to see the Mets win. Enough of this crap of spinning our wheels, getting a new manager, getting a new president, a bit. get it right. A lot of teams get it right. It's time to get it right. They got it right two years ago until September, and then the Braves were... You know, doing whatever the hell they were doing, and they they basically tied the Mets uh, to finish up in the first place. But I'll talk more about this as we go along. There'll be plenty of live streams, plenty of little shorts talking about goofing on the Mets. And I mean, I mean, at this point, some of these guys need to be goofed on. Okay, uh, we're gonna goof on them, and that's what I do here. I have fun at the players' expense. I said this last year. I say this again. I'm not going anywhere. I've been a Mets fan for a very long time. I expect to be doing stuff like this online for the next 25 years. I am not going anywhere. So the players think that I'm going to go away. No, 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 no. Don't perform. You're going away. You're getting traded. You're getting released. You're getting sent off to the Phantom Zone. Your host here is not going anywhere at the baseball hut. I'm staying right here watching this team. And if I feel I need to destroy this team on a daily basis, I will do that. If I need to destroy a player that isn't performing, I will do that. If, I, if I'm going to goof on a player like Daniel Vogelback, the, the rest of them are on notice. I know the team watched the videos last year because after I did the first video, the first rant, and, and basically just destroyed the entire team. Pete Alonzo started doing this obscene gesture on the field, almost like a screw you to me and all the fans that were watching in the ballpark and on TV. So they, I know they respond, just like WFN responds to, to my, my videos. I have no fear here about what I say. It's not, nothing. And I'll say it to a player's face. It's like, you're terrible. I would have said that to Dan Vogelbeck, probably twice my size. But I, I would have told Vogelbeck, you're terrible. You, you stink. You stink. Mistake. I would have told him that. You know, you can't run, you can't move, you can't play the position. And I will do that kind of level of just, just destroying a player if I have to. I, you know, if you don't perform well, I don't care. I want a player that wants to win, wants to be here, isn't going to cry, isn't going to give me a thumbs down. It, the only two times, folks, only two times in the last Four seasons that they've been doing the, these videos for you on YouTube with the baseball hut. Only time I ever got really mad is when they did the thumbs down. Like one of the live streams, one of my best live streams, and last year when they were playing so poorly, and I just ripped into the team. Nobody communicates in, in, in a more direct way 
as a YouTuber than I do. There are a lot of people that will pretend, WFAN pretends, but I live and breathe this team winning every day. And every game is precious. Every year is precious, and they're wasting time. Time is of the essence. Got to win today, and that's it. Don't win today. We're going to look and see why you didn't. And if it's a situation where you need to go, you're out of here. And once that happens, then I know I got to rip into a player. I mentioned Brett Beatty. Has to go. He cannot stay here. He cannot hit. His bat is slower than Dom Smith's, and I never thought I'd ever say that on a video. Mark Vianos has to play every day. He can hit. He can hit good fastballs. Uh, Brett Beatty's terrible. Thank God he's a, he's a hard worker. Give him credit. He's able to, to really uh, get his defense in a good way, but he's terrible. Has to go. Back to AAA and stay there. You're not a regular player. You're not a major leaguer. Sorry. I've seen enough games. I know a major leaguer when I see one. He's not one of them. Well, this is just a preamble. This came out, this came a little bit later than last year's rant. Last year's rant was early May. I started on them in early May. Now, it's going to just start. It's going to be like a drum beat. Boom. <laughs> drum beat. It's going to be pounding and pounding and pounding. And nobody hits the players harder than I do. I don't want to have to do this. Don't, don't, guys, don't make me do this. And I don't want to do it. But if you don't perform, you're going to have to deal with the, the baseball hut. It's as simple as that. And it's going to be, it's going to be fun. You're going to like it. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave comments in the comment section. I would mention anyone leaving stupid internet comments about the Mets that are generic and that people, everybody else does, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete it. I'm going to block it. Don't belittle me. Don't belittle anybody that's writing to anybody in the chat. You do that, I have no tolerance for, for the monkey crap. I really don't. I want everybody to be treated with respect here, myself included. Everybody that writes in comments, everybody, 99% of the people who write to me, they treat each other with respect. Treat you with respect. That's all I ever ask. And I know when I go on these rants and the Mets don't play well, all the sort of assholes come out of the woodwork tell me, oh, I knew that. You don't know shit. You don't know anything. You know what you're talking about. You're just, a, you're just an asshole. Which is a lot of people. <laughs> like, like Frank Fleming. Frank Fleming's a Mets fan. He wants the Mets to do poorly, but then when the Mets do poorly, he basically uh, spikes the football. Anyway. Don't like him. I don't like him at all. He's a grifter. You know, that's in my view. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. And of course, please subscribe to the Baseball Hut, and I'll see you later.